So I just landed in Anchorage and check this out. Anybody who knows me knows how much I hate the cold and it's actually so cold out today that it looks foggy, but it's not even fog. It's just that it's so cold the moisture has literally frozen in midair. Jesus, take the wheel. So it's no big secret that things in Alaska are more expensive than in the lower 48 states, and hotels are no exception. Lucky for me though, I happen to have a friend who lives right in the heart of downtown Anchorage, and he said I could stay with him for the next month that I'll be here. So this is home sweet home for the next 30 days. But first things first, let me give you a crash course tour of Alaska. So this is Alaska. The villages, towns, and cities are scattered all over the state, and believe it or not, there's no roads that connect them. They have roads within the town for people to get around, but there's no way to get from one town to another, not by road anyway. The only exception is what could be considered Alaska's only interstate highway that basically connects the Kenai Peninsula to Anchorage and Anchorage to Fairbanks. If your town isn't off this highway, you're on your own. Oddly enough though, even Juneau, the capital of Alaska, is only accessible by airplane. I'll be in Anchorage though, and even though it's not the capital, it's pretty much the New York City of Alaska. Downtown is where all the action is. All the restaurants, souvenir shops, and comforts of the city with those snow-capped mountains as the backdrop. Anchorage is surprisingly full of stuff. Places like the Captain Cook Hotel, Snow City Cafe, Kaladi Brothers Coffee, Spinard Roadhouse, Garcia's and Eagle River with the cheesiest enchiladas I've ever had all the numerous drive through coffee stalls all over the city. Side note, by the way, of all the places I've traveled, hands down, the best coffee, Alaska. Anchorage is loaded with countless coffee stalls that are basically little sheds that are drive through only. If you've ever been west of the Mississippi, think Dutch Bros, because it's just like that. But there are tons of them everywhere. And when you buy a coffee drink, they all give you a little sticker with every cup. And let's just say, I think I have a coffee problem. Not to mention all the punch cards we accumulated. Downtown in the warmer months, they have food carts that sell hot dogs, sausages, and reindeer sausage, which is something you'll see a lot of here. Obviously, it's way more walkable of a city when everything isn't covered in snow and ice. But after traveling 4,000 miles and 12 hours to get here, I'm hungry and ready to eat. So, off to one of Josh and my's favorite places, Leroy's. Alaska is chock full of old diners, just like this one, and tons of hole-in-the-wall bars. Of course, they have their nice restaurants and upscale places as well, but I'm a huge sucker for those greasy spoon relics of yesteryear, and Alaska does not disappoint. The best part is, since the sun doesn't come up till way later in the morning, you can sit and eat your breakfast and watch that beautiful Alaskan sunrise. So coming to Alaska in January, this is pretty much what you have to look forward to. Cold and snow, and snow, and snow, and more snow. I mean, duh, it's Alaska. The sun comes up just after about 10 a.m. and by 5 p.m. it's totally dark out. Darkness about 18 hours a day, but honestly, I kind of like it. Nighttime outside, cozy fireplace heater going, make a pot of coffee, plenty of old video games to play for the millionth time, and yes, don't worry Zelda nerds, I got all hundred sculptulas. Keep in mind, Anchorage is not the desolate remote places in Alaska you see on Discovery Channel, so you're not going to see igloos and people living on mountainsides here. Anchorage is a city. The roads pretty much stay covered in snow and ice all winter long, same with the sidewalks. Some parts of the city have heated sidewalks, but most of the time you're just walking on layers of snow and ice. They usually send out snow plows and backhoes which collect the snow, put it into trucks, and then dump it in these giant lots. 
Driving in the snow in Alaska isn't nearly as bad as it is in the lower 48 states, mainly because people are so used to it here. And if the parking meters happen to get so cold they stop working, well, free parking. When I was here in the summer though, it was the complete opposite. 18 hours of daylight, 50 to 60 degree temperatures, and either raining or sunny. And driving the Seward Highway to see the beautiful mountains on the water was absolutely gorgeous, especially at sunset. But this is January, so none of that. But that doesn't mean you'll leave here empty-handed either. So about an hour outside of Anchorage is this spot tucked away in the mountains called Girdwood. And trust me, you want to see some incredible scenery? Make this a day trip. Alaskans included, Girdwood is a huge ski destination. I admit, I am not a winter sports person, but there's a big resort here, a handful of restaurants, and a couple breweries in Girdwood. Perfect for a weekend getaway, or even a day trip like we did. And that drive back to Anchorage as the sun goes down? Oh man. Oh man. So another benefit to having Girdwood so close by is the night skies. See, if you look at a light pollution map of Alaska, you can see that Anchorage is really, really bright. And unless you plan on spending any time in the villages and towns scattered all over Alaska, there's really no decent night skies around here because of that. Unless you go up north past uh, Anchorage into Fairbanks, or unless you go down on the Kenai Peninsula, you're really not going to see much of anything because of all the light pollution, except for Girdwood. See, Girdwood is far enough away from Anchorage, and there's enough mountains between here and there, that you get some really, really good views of the night sky because the mountains block out a lot of the light pollution. And because Girdwood is surrounded by a lot of trees, it filters out the light from a lot of the ski resort and, you know, the highway and stuff like that. And because it's dark for 16 to 18 hours a day, you have plenty of time to take your time, get some time lapses, and really get some good shots, which is what I'm doing tonight because it's clear. And speaking of which, on a really clear night, it's possible you might actually see the auroras, which I'm hoping to do. We'll see. Thank you. 
for a lot of Alaskans, airplanes are just as common as cars. You've got these towns and villages scattered out all over the place, and there's no way to get from point A to point B, or even leave the town you're in, except by airplane. Only 20% of Alaska is accessible by roads, and because of that, Alaska has more private pilots per capita than any other state in the country. And if you happen to know somebody who has their own plane, or if you know how to fly yourself, I mean, come on, where else are you going to find views like this? Honestly, I got used to Alaska pretty quickly because it's not nearly as extreme as I thought it would be. But since it is sub-zero temperatures outside day and night, and since there's only about six hours of daylight, you'll definitely spend a lot of time inside. Then if you're a night owl like me, the constant darkness only adds to the cozy vibe. It honestly feels like back on the east coast when they call for a snow day and you just hunker down and enjoy spending time at home order a giant pizza from Uncle Joe's, catch up on some GTA, and make an adult slumber party out of it. Of course, there are restaurants and bars to get out of the house and go to, and when it's negative temperatures with two feet of snow on the ground, that hot bowl of fudge just hits totally different. The vibe up here in the winter is totally different, and I have to say, I actually kind of dig it. Once you get used to things, you settle in pretty quickly, and Alaska starts to grow on you. It's definitely not for everyone. The long flights getting here, the even longer nights, the cold, but it starts to feel like home real fast. I was honestly getting worried that maybe I didn't capture enough stuff in this video and that maybe I just didn't do enough stuff in general, but this pretty much is life in Anchorage in the winter. I'm coming back here this summer, so I'll get to show you way more of the state and you'll get to see way more of what Alaska has to offer. So even though this is my last sunset to see this time around, it won't be long till I get to see it without the snow. That's it for me for now. Thanks for watching.